Heroes and heroines of all ages. When the world tells you to get a life, you're always welcome at the 1-Up Block. My name is Dan the Man, your host, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. When we last left off, we uh, came into the Great Bay Temple, finally, for the first time ever. And now we're currently tackling the Great Bay Temple. Um, I know I've said I, I hate this dungeon so many times before we actually came into the dungeon. But um, I want to clarify, just because this dungeon's hard and I hate it because it's... It's really complicated in that sense. Uh, that does not necessarily mean that I hate the dungeon. It, I know that sounds stupid, but like it's a good dungeon. It's really complicated, and you have to actually think about it. But um, uh, I don't know. It's it's a good dungeon. It really is. So there. That that's all I have to say about that. I just don't like it because uh, past experiences have taught me that it's uh really complicated and I was obviously an idiot the first time I played this and couldn't do it without help but after I uh, played the uh, did the practice run and I actually succeeded in figuring out most of the stuff myself it wasn't that bad in all honesty I just I just whenever you think of something you, you have a bad memory right so like whenever you have a bad experience as a kid you're just always gonna remember it as a bad experience um, and when you're a kid, you're just kind of not prepared for stuff like this dungeon, and it's just overly complicated. And it's not the game designer's fault, it's really good. I love the way this dungeon is set up. Everything's all nice and thought out, but, like, when you're a kid, you just, you don't like that stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> that's my two cents on that. If you break this pot here, and not hit the thing like I did, you'll get yourself a fairy. Make sure you don't miss that one, that one's easy to miss. Uh, there's no more fairies in this room, so that's good. If we turn into Zora Link, we'll be able to take these guys down a notch. These are de these are bio bio babas. <laughs> they're Deku babas who live underwater, obviously. Um, once you hit them, they're gonna sink to the bottom. You can also sink to the bottom and kill everything by electrocuting them. I don't know if you can actually. Yeah, you can. You can just punch them too. It's always an option. He's dead too. Okay, so now we're just gonna get this chest. And looky looky, we got a key. So break this. Break that. It's nothing but recharging our ammo. Which is nice, accepted. Oh my word, it's a bomb shoe. Ow. No, get back up. <laughs> Taking damage from a bomb shoe is not really that important. <clears throat> just took one heart, it's not that bad. There's also a treasure chest over here, which is very easily accept uh, accepted accept I can't I can't speak <laughs> it's accessible by hopping on those lily pads I think if you hop on top of the lily pads when you have the Deku Baba on you on it or something it'll hurt you maybe don't quote me on that but as you can see there's another chest in here but if we look it's the boss key so obviously we're not gonna be going this way for a while because we literally just started the dungeon and we're you know, we're not almost done. I mean, we, we're we getting there, but we're not certainly almost done. All right, but once you come out of here, you're set back into this area. So you want to go and find the next door, which is, I believe, this one. There's only two doors you can ha you can go through at the moment, and it's these two. So follow the red, the red one. Oh, God. All right, he's going to open his mouth, and I'm just going to cut him. All right, come here, you. Actually, you know what? You don't need to worry about these guys. They don't have... No, take off the arm. The arm. The... Uh, yeah, aiming. You break these pots for ammo and hearts, if you'd so like. But... We're gonna want to get out of here. And I'm not sure if there's a fairy in here. Oh, come on. Really? I'm gonna get up here and check and see if there's a fairy in here. There probably is, to be honest. Tattle wants to say something. If you could somehow step on top of that Octorok, I bet you'd be able to climb up onto that pillar. But the Octorok is so squishy and it keeps squirming around. There's got to be something you can do. So that's a hint. What's it a hint towards? Well, it's hard to say at this point, right? Alright. Die. Die. Maybe he drops the fairy? No, he drops the magic. Okay, so... Uh, is there a fairy in here? Oh, no, there's not. <laughs> Stupid me. Alright, so we don't have to worry about this area. That's good. There's a bomb chew here, but don't try to block it. Like, don't try to stop it from exploding on you by blocking it. It'll bounce you off of the, uh... <clears throat> It'll bounce you off the platform. Instead, 
If you just let him hit you, he'll blow up and just do damage, and it's not that bad. But in here, you're going to want to stock up on your magic, which is why they gave you these choo-choos. I don't know if I ever told you that they're called choo-choos, but I guess we can uh, let Tattle tell you what they are. A yellow choo-choo is nothing, nothing to sweat about. It usually has something inside its stomach that's of use. These things are just for re refilling your ammo. That's all they ever are for. Like, even in Termina Field, they have, like, hearts and stuff in them just so you can restock yourself. But, um, yeah, obviously this is going to be a boss fight if they're packing us with all kinds of goodies. Um, well, well, holy crap. I get, I think, I think it's glitching. What? Hello? Where's the boss, man? I can't leave. Oh, come on. The game glitched. All right, guys, I'll be right. No, I'm just kidding. Look up. And there he is, all creepy and stuff. <laughs> Kapoof. Yeah, this boss is uh, what you would call annoying. He has all these little orb thingies, and they surround his body. But, you can make quick work of a good chunk of them if you just go next to him and start spin attacking. I guess you could also alternatively throw bombs at him. Let me attempt. I haven't actually ever thrown bombs at him like that, so let me let me see what I can do. Huh. Did it work? Did it work? Is that a doorbell? So I guess if you just chunk bombs at everywhere, maybe it'll start blowing them up. Yeah, but it's not it's not an effective way of doing things, so I'm just gonna do it the way I know how to do it. You're gonna go up close to him and just spin attack. What you're doing here is shaving off most of his balls, which sounds gross. Don't take that the wrong way. You're shaving off his spheres, so he has nowhere to defend himself. Uh, if you notice, every so often he'll open and close his eyeball. That's his weak spot, and to, sh to hit it, you have to shoot it with an arrow, obviously. So, <sighs> if he's blocked with the balls while he's opening his eye, it's going to be really difficult for Link to hit him. So... Naturally, we're gonna try and take away all his defenses. So, if you just spin attack and take out most of his orbs, it'll be easier for you to hit him in the eyeball. Now, once you get a good chunk of the balls off, you can just wait for his eyeball to be exposed, and there you go. You can shoot the balls, which is probably something you wanna do, just so you can avoid the annoyances. All right, but he's done being a douche now. This part of his attack is he's just gonna run around the room. Damn. His testicles are being annoying. Get out of get out of here. Ugh. This is why this boss is annoying, really. Your first time through, you'll probably die. But if you come to this corner, typically you can wait for him to come towards you. And then he'll expose his eye to you, so. Get him, get him. Oh, come on! Damn testicle! Alright, his eyeball's open, so shoot at the eye. Let him hop around the room some more, and then... Bam! Alright, and that's it. Wait, oh, I was gonna... I forgot to tattle him. I don't ever tattle the enemies. Maybe I'll do an extra episode where I go back and tattle a bunch of the enemies. I don't know. It's not really that important, but... I like to tattle enemies. I like to navvy enemies. You know what I'm saying? But inside this, we get the ice arrows. Now, the ice arrows are something that's returning from Ocarina of Time, but, however, in Ocarina of Time, all they did was freeze enemies, and that was all they did. They were an extra item that you did not need to beat the game, and most people come to the agreement that they were just added in before... They were added in, but they were never really given a purpose because they ran out of time or something like that. But... In this game, they're actually really useful. Mostly in this dungeon, but they may be they may come into use again later. I don't recall. I I don't ever get this far when I've played Majora's Mask ever, a second time because I I've, I've played it and beat it once, like no joke, but I do know a lot about this obviously. So, that one time was all I needed apparently. But I do need some more times under my belt, so this is the second time I've actually attempted to beat Majora's Mask, and you guys are along the ride with me. So yeah, take that for what you will. Eh, son of a bitch, I missed. I missed. I missed. I'm out. Okay, so we're gonna go through here, and this is gonna take us back into this area. 
Oh no, wait, we shouldn't have done that. Pfft, son of a... Okay, so... Ignore me. Go back through the red... Ah, son of a bitch. I hate this room. Go. Stay next to the wall. There we go. Okay, so come back in here. If you remember, which is like not even a couple of seconds ago, the, uh... Ow, get out of here. The, uh, Octorok. Tattle said that we can step on it, but it's too squishy for us to actually step on. Well... If you take out your ice arrows, and then you take off the Zora mask, you can actually shoot the Octorok and turn it into a standable platform. Standable. You can stand on it as a platform. It has ice physics too, so be careful not to slip. But here's another one of those switches that once we turn, it'll be finished forever and we don't ever have to come turn it again. I appreciate that. I don't like it when I have the option to change directions of stuff because that means it can get super complicated. Whenever things get too complicated, I get upset. And when I get upset, people die! <laughs> All right, but Austin Powers jokes aside, let's make our way back to this little hole over here and then swim our way through, yoink. And we're gonna be back in this room, but we do wanna try to go through this door again. Son of a bitch, come on. And... Oh, God, what the... Ugh, I hate this stupid room. It's it's ro it's rotating you way too fast, and I don't like it. Of course, that's just me complaining. It's probably just because I suck. Probably just because I suck. Like, I'm, that's, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm complaining for no reason. Don't listen to me. That's just part of the Let's Play. You're, around, you're along for the ride to see me complain, right? All right, so... Jump here... And then this is what we can do with the ISOs as well. We can make platforms in water by freezing the surface. Which is kind of cool. I like that idea. They don't stay frozen forever though, so make sure you do your best to hurry up and get through. Climbing on top of them can be kind of annoying too because they're not, uh, they don't function too well as climbable platforms. But using that, we can come into this room. And then there will be this choo-choo, and you're like, oh, well, a choo-choo, that's cool, what's inside of him? <laughs> Actually, there is nothing inside of him. He's just a, uh, let's read his, uh, tattle thing, shall we? A blue choo-choo. This doesn't, this doesn't have anything inside of it. It's just, ah, so it's really just a blob of water. So this thing is just a blob of water. What do we do with water? We freeze it. And that's, that's a nice little puzzle there. It's kind of complicated if you're not thinking about it, you know what I mean? Like, it's not hard or, like, really super complicated in its uh, execution, but, like, if you're not thinking about it and you're a kid, you probably won't recognize that you should probably freeze it and turn it into a block of ice. I'm just saying. I know I was a dumb kid. I'm not saying you were, but uh, if I played this when I was young, I probably would have never made it this far into the game ever. <laughs> Would have had a hell of a time trying, but I mean, I would have never made it. I'm just not that smart enough. Or I wasn't that smart enough. I like to think I'm a little more intelligent than I used to be, but you know, even that's debatable. Alright, now we're done with this. I was about to put on the Gora mask and jump into the water. Oh boy, that would have been fun. Put on the Zora mask and let's head out. Autobots, roll out. Ouch. You could not. You can make like a shoe and not. You can make like a shoe and not. No, don't do that. All right. Position yourself and then blam. You have to kill those hands or else they'll throw you back into the room. So I don't think I mentioned that the last time I did it, but I did it anyway while you were, uh, oh, come on. I almost made that. Damn, that thing knocked me back a lot. I think there's something else we can do in this room. If I, if I recall, this is the, okay. This is the area with the, yeah, this is the area with the boss key in it, which... Well, don't do that. We can just ignore them, actually. Let's see if there's any more arrows. Arrows? Hearts? It's probably magic in these jars. There's jars all over the place, just to help you restock on your stuff, because you will be using your magic a lot in this area. Hopefully, if you're following along, you got the, uh... the double magic from... the Goron Temple? Was it? The Snowhead? Hopefully, you got that upgrade from the fairy... Oh, son of a bitch. I did that wrong. Can I? Alright. Sorry, I just like to make sure I'm on as close as I can be before I actually attempt to make jumps. You break through here. 
there will be this frozen door, which means we actually have to annoyingly go back into our inventory, pull out the fire arrows, and uh, that animation on the arrows, like, charging up as you pick the different one, like, this animation right here, that's cool and all, but, like, seriously, it gets really aggravating really fast. But, here we have this guy. Haha! -ha. And he's not that bad. He calls down all these goo stuff, and then he grabs the goo and throws it at you. But, once you hit him, he goes into that state. And what you're going to want to do is probably not do what I did. Okay, yeah. You're going to have to hit him as fast as possible, because if he comes over you with that... No, I'm not finishing that sentence, because it would sound gross. Uh, once he puts the orb over you, he's going to drop down and uh, attempt to... He's probably going to do it right here. Yeah. Once he drops down, the goo expands, and if you get caught in it, he starts doing this uh, anime-style beat-em-up. <laughs> Poof. It's really irritating. Just... It's not that cool. Okay. You have to freeze him before he drops. And once he drops, you just proceed to beat the crap out of him, because he'll hop around, and then he'll turn around. So what I'm going to do here... I'm gonna let him get over me, and then we're gonna run away. And you gotta wait for him to come back up. I don't think I did that right. No, I did it right. If you do it too early, he won't get affected by your stuff, so be careful. And he's not so bad. Alright, and while we're here, we're actually gonna start the quest for the Don Jaro. So this is the first frog we're actually going to talk to with the Don Ghetto's mask. I said Jero, it's it's Ghetto. Don Ghetto. So let's talk to him. Ah, Don Ghetto. I, it has been so long. What has brought you all this way? Could it be you came all this way looking for me? Ah, you need not say a thing upon seeing that face. I understand. Is it true? But I heard that it was still winter in the mountains. When spring comes, I shall definitely go to the mountains. So let us meet again. Okay, so you do not have to unfreeze Snowhead to collect the frogs. That's good. I was kind of worried there for a second. Uh, this door is locked because they don't want you to go through that door. They want you to go through this one. Why? Well, if you recall, on the other side of this, there was the boss key. So yay for that. We are so close to actually just completing this dungeon. We're actually halfway through. We're not almost done with it, so don't get your hopes up. You got the boss key. Hooray. I'm going to take off the Don Ghetto's mask and put back on the Zora mask. But I think on that note, we're going to call it quits today because we're all out of time for this episode. A hero's work is never done. Join me again next time as we continue to tackle the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Later days, everybody. I'm thinking like a king, but I'm treated like a trooper. They say I'm only a man, but I'm feeling pretty super. And I'm going to be bigger than the rest, and maybe I'll rest when I'm the very best. And I control the game like Star Selectors on my chest, man. Yeah, there's only one direction where I want to go. Side scroll, and I know everything that lies ahead of me. Like I got a strategy guide for my life, and I'm show. I can do the impossible. I'm unstoppable, like Santa Golds, and all my obstacles. But I hope the guy